Chris. What is going on, my friend? Not much right now with this whole COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are, people. Jump right in. Yeah, and here we are, straight away. What are you sipping on? I've got some mate that I brewed up and will slowly be sipping on to keep me up. Keep the, the old, uh, what you, the keep whole the vibes up. lubricated. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many benefits. You don't have to teach me about that because I'm not uh, I'm not fully tapped into that one. But uh, what is your intention for today, my friend? My intention for today is nothing other than I'll leave it with three words, truth, wisdom, and love. I think it's important to just speak our truth, speak truthfully, and that in itself is wisdom and to gain from wisdom from you and hopefully open up some doors for people to relate to us. And that's all love. What about you? Being vulnerable and honestly, man, now more than ever, I just want to have some fun. Yeah. Yeah. Have we all fun. need it. We all shake need it off. Life. Yeah. Right. Get yeah, all give, that, get a little bit that of energy, stuck energy away. Cause it is, you know, everybody's really stuck right now in their energy and, and in their momentum most likely in life. And that's an interesting place to be when you really have to slow down. Yeah. And I think it's important to kind of call to presence, like, that's a common experience because I've had my own, my own fits of it. Like there was a couple of days where I got, it was like swimming through gelatinous, this like gelatinous material was just like every single thing was, every single thing was a big deal. It's like, yeah. it's just some days, like it's when you get to that point where it's like getting out of bed, it's just like, Oh man, yeah. it's so yeah. dense. I feel heavy, but mm -hmm. I know I just need to get up, focus on my breath, come back center, come back to home do what's yeah. necessary yeah and that's the first thing me personally when i wake up i roll out of bed you know after my bowel movements well-trained body <laughs> i'll just sit down <laughs> in my meditation and uh that's i think that's the best way to start the day is to go straight back home and just center yourself however that's best for you that's funny we actually have the exact same thing i'm, I'm reading a book <laughs> and it's just like get every first get everything out of the way Pee, poo, yeah. piss, you need to drink something, get all those things out of the way because that's what's going to be calling to your attention when you first sit down for that meditation. So we yeah. actually have the same alignment on that piece right there. Yeah, yeah. And, um, just getting those few little things in order allows you to just relax a little bit more. Mm. Have you been so, a long time meditator? You know, on and off. At first, it was absolutely not. You know what I mean? I, I would like to say I meditated and sometimes I'd sit down, you know, and cross my legs and close my eyes, but without much of a destination point, you know, is, I mean, then that's really meditation, even at its highest point, just watching your thoughts and trying to still the mind. Um, but it was sporadic. It was never consistent um, until more of late, you know, it's been a morning thing, even if it's just for five minutes, sometimes for 30. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely become a big tool in my bag. And what about you? Meditation. I think I went through the same phase everyone else did in the beginning, which was like resistance to the whole idea, like even getting through like, I, gosh, it's actually crazy to think that sitting through like even five minutes. Yeah. Pure, unfiltered, un, there's a great word that's not coming to my brain right now, but just like an unadulterated hell. It was just like <laughs> not, it wasn't fun, man. You just like, no. you, think you can sit down for a couple minutes, but if you're like me, like you're always buzzing and beeping and bopping and moving all the time, like doing yeah. something like that is absurd. And it wasn't until hmm, more recently, I'd say even in the past like year mm -hmm. when I got more committed to it. Yeah. And Same now I, I went through like my first like hour, an hour and a half of sitting. And I was, when I finished, I was just like, Whoa, I can't believe I did that. Like, sure. Like yeah. you have to kind of keep sending yourself, but just being able to, especially if you're starting out at the beginning, being able to just like do like one minute. You just say, I'm just yeah, going to sit for one minute. It's huge. And that's what I always try to tell people. And it's what people say all the time with yoga and meditation. Like, oh, I'm not flexible enough. And yep. oh, I, I couldn't sit down for that long. It's like, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> that's why we sit down and we try it over and over until we can learn to move out of the head to the heart or to the quantum, you know, whatever you want to use. Dr. Joe Dispenza definitely was the motivation spends his work yeah yeah he he was definitely the the moving factor once i started and i'm not a very scientific person either which was funny but once you started to put the science and 
and the wisdom behind it from that side, I was like really into it. I was like, okay, now I can really see what's going on here. So I don't, we might have discussed this and I, I didn't know that we had this mutual connection. I'm a, I'm like massive fanboy of Joe Dispenza's work. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you know that? I did. I did. Um, I don't know if that might have been the seed um, from when we all hung out that one night, you may have planted that seed. Um, but I definitely saw a lot of his work on your stories and your Facebook and stuff like that. So, and, and it pulls you, it pulls you in. And when you open yourself up to any teaching really, but his specifically is, is huge. And, and in today's world, it's huge because everybody wants to be able to quantify and measure and see mm -hmm. what's really going on and get results back. You know, we've lost that intuitive, magical side, that mystery, which is okay. And, you know, that's, that's what I feel like part of my purpose is, is to bring people back to that mystery and the more simple truths, but you know, we're in a new age world that needs a lot of, a lot of words around the truth. <laughs> Sadly, I think that that, I think that you're right. And also at the same time, now more than ever, I find that the greatest peace I ever have is with less, mm. less things that I feel like I need to complete in each day, less, yeah. less with more intention, even kind of like a seemingly remedial example, like in my exercises now, you know, when I first started working out around like high school time, it was just like, get as many reps as you can with as much weight as right. you can. Now I'm like, I could get way more out of one slow controlled push up rep oh, than yeah. any person could with 10 or 15 Absolutely. regular push ups. Yeah, more awareness, more engagement. It, mm -hmm. it changes everything. It does. Now, this is a, I think it's a perfect segue because we probably did talk about Joe Dispenza the first time we get to, we first time we met, which. Mm -hmm. I distinctly remember, actually, I think it was Kayla, Kayla Hans, our, our mutual friend, yep. which actually is funny. I'm actually going to be interviewing her right after this. We're going to be like, really? Right yeah, we're going to oh, be talking to her after this. That'll such a like, perfect little link, how it's like, coming together. Yeah. What but a bright I, soul. I think I remember her saying, I have this friend, you got to meet him. You guys are just going <laughs> to, you're just going to click. And I was just like, yeah. all right, cool. And I, I remember I like drove across town and I was like finishing up some work. And then like I came in and one of the things I was most stricken by about you and is probably one of the main reasons why we're having this conversation today is because oh, I just had like energy shoot through my body. I just felt like I was right back there. One of the first things that you did that to me is one of the most beautiful things you can ever give as a gift, at least to me, I'd say as a human being in general was you were just like, what are you about? Mm -hmm. What are you into? Yeah. And all of a sudden, <laughs> it just, for it. you went from stranger to like best friend in a second. I remember me and you were like geeking out. I think yeah, it was about we Joe Dispenza's work. We're going back and forth and Kayla and uh, I think it was Taylor looking at us like, are you guys like dating right now? Like, what is this? Yeah. Like, they're, they're just we looking at us. We're just going out. back they and just forth. left us. Oh, yeah. No, that was, it was, it's funny, you know, and we really did. We only got to hang out for like that full day. You came over with, um, with Morgan and the little lizard. Rest in peace, my brother. Rest oh, peace. heartbreaking. But, um, but yeah, we all connected, you know, like that. And those are the most beautiful moments in life. They really are those connections mm. where you just go straight to the soul level, really, you know, just to put a fancy term on it, but you just connect on that deeper level, like right away. And it's trust, you know, you're like, okay, I can trust him. He's real. And that's the most important thing. Mm. And I think that was the only time we've ever hung out. Sadly, sadly it was because after that you um, you guys were actually going straight to Jacksonville from from Kayla's, I believe, um, and you went up there and then and then road tripping very shortly after that. Yeah, we did road trip shortly after that. Actually, that reminds me, you at the time you were prior to us leaving all that, you actually shared that you were finishing your yoga teacher training. Yeah, yeah. I and now you're certified, correct? Correct. Yeah. Be the four one one on that. What happened? What was the journey like? What? Where are you at in all this? I mean, if we're gonna go to there, we might as well go back to the start. Get this podcast rolling. You know, <laughs> there's there's a lot of things that led up to it for sure. I won't get too deep, but eventually you get to a point in your life where you really just question everything that you're doing. You maybe hit a few road bumps, some blockages, some failures or perceived failures. And then you really 
are forced to step back and say, you know, what is like, who am I? Like, what am I getting so caught up in here? And that was it for me. That was what inspired it. Like, I've got to find myself, you know, mm -hmm. which is funny because it's really come full circle and we'll get to that later. But just sensing that hole and needing to find myself, you know, rather than spinning around in circles, trying to explain it better. That's really what it felt like. And then, so I was playing soccer at the time and really cut that out. I was like, I'm done with this. You know what I mean? And you know, yoga was there. Yoga was my, my pathway. And I kept meeting people that were on a similar path. And that was the inspiration for sure. Mm. Now you said you just kind of poking back at it and again, you can go as deep or shallow as you want. As I even said, before we mm -hmm. started, what you pointed at, there was some deep stuff that ultimately got you to that point. So I remember without about you that you were like big into soccer, really, really talented. And then obviously like that kind of came to its end and then that led into yoga, but uh, it was almost like there was something there for you. Like what was this conglomerate of who you are today and what it kind of came to that led you to that seeking those bigger questions? How did you get to, who am I? Why am I here? What is this? So just to take it back to the root, um, for to let everybody in, I was adopted when I was three months old from mm -hmm. Kaliningrad, Russia by my beautiful family now, which I'm, more than grateful for anything to have you know it's people have a lot of misconceptions around adoption and a lot of them are true but in terms of who is my family there's no question that this is my family and and i've also learned that you you make your own family you know you create your tribe you find your soul pod whatever you want to call it and those are your family um but that's where the whole really started you know from just those first three months of coming out of the womb into this world you know chaos being held in like a loving mother's arms and then yeah going back like almost back into the womb is what it it energetically because i don't remember but when you like feel those like visceral feelings from like your roots your nature it's like it's still there you know it's mm -hmm. definitely something that I'm still working on all the time and gaining new perspectives on and filling what I thought was a hole, you know what I mean? But I, I realized that it wasn't a hole in the end, hmm. but that was the start. And then, you know, and I had a beautiful childhood in my family and it was a very soccer based family. My grandfather was, a soccer legend in, in, in England and, and then in America as a coach. And so, yeah. So, you know, you kind of come into this world and, and it's there for you. You know, some people are their their father's a carpenter. And so they become a carpenter as well. And, yeah. you know, you kind of carry on that, that family tradition by nature because it's your surroundings. It's how you make it's all like your none. family happy. They love to see you do it. You love to do it. And you're like, well, you know, this is it. And there was nothing else in my life after that. You know, when soccer was there, it was just soccer and family and playing, you know, just playing. And then, you know, you get older, you go through middle school, you start to get other friends that aren't so interested in those things. And you start to shift and morph into a different version to fit in in different places. And then, you know, everybody goes through it. You know, everybody kind of loses that, that pure root, that nature, that playful, loving spirit that we all really are um and yeah not my form of expressing that spirit was definitely through soccer until i got to a point around 18 is when i really started to question it like am i just doing this because i was born into it or is do i really love it and i was lacking a lot of confidence at the time yeah met a few failures didn't show up rise up to a few occasions on like tryouts to experiences with different clubs. And, and I was just in a hurt place, you know, I was in a poor me little victim place. And I saw what I needed to do, which was to step away from everything, everything and find myself beyond all these titles and labels and, and characters that I was filling. What, what age was that? Around 18 was when I started to kind of like feel that. So that was, I had graduated from high school, moved to England to play academy soccer. That was all going great, but kind of like fizzled out after a year, came home, you know, got lost and just smoking too much weed and, you know, <laughs> partying with friends, distracting myself from the fact yeah. that I, I'm fucking up. 
and then um but then you know i was still playing the game still loving the game i would like i bounced over to california for a while you know i i bounced around for sure um and you do enough bouncing to where you're like oh i gotta i gotta stop real quick and and recenter myself you know there's something to be said about that not to completely cut you off because i want that to you know that story no. to keep going but there's something to be said about you know, I'm a, I'm a believer in, you know, you need to change your scenery every once in a while, like in order to have like new thoughts, you know, I mean, we talk about this in Joe Dispenza's work, right? In order to, you know, have new thoughts, new feelings, like it's sometimes it takes a little bit of, a, of an environment shift because our environment can literally cue our brain to be reliving in a past experience, a, a past emotion, a past neurological pattern that's been so deeply ingrained into the, just this groove in, in our, in our neurology and you know i had a similar experience as well where i had to like leave florida because i'd just been here for all this time and it wasn't until i left where something new started to show up but at some point you have to question am i going to all these places because i'm trying to escape the inner lack inner of child. peace <laughs> call it the inner child right like the, just the pain the whatever it is that hasn't been fully dealt with and fully mended we we seek external things to do that drugs partying mm -hmm. even relationships intimate relationships oh, friends yeah. going out parties, like, traveling yeah, anything can become a distraction anything I, I believe that like anything can anything outside of ourselves rather can become a distraction not that they're inherently bad like having a girlfriend is inherently bad but it, if you have this like deep sense of loneliness because you know, your, your parents divorced at a young age and you, you know, one of your parents left, you didn't see them. And now you're unconsciously seeking out that inside of a partner, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're seeking to fill a hole versus the analogy I've been doing is filling a hole versus becoming whole and becoming Very whole is about yeah. coming back home. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, did you have that experience? Like of you were going, 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 but it wasn't until you stopped. You're like, this isn't working. Absolutely. Yeah, it was. When I was in California, I moved out to California, um, age 21, let's say. Mm -hmm. And I was out there in a really cool environment, big house in LA with six other guys that, you know, the club paid, I paid for and we didn't get paid to play or anything, but we lived like, you know, we lived good for free. And, um, and I really thought that's what I wanted. You know, I really had this dream of being in those sort of environments and you go to a few environments and you still feel so lonely. And it's like, wait, I thought that was, this was supposed to fix that, but it yeah. doesn't, it never really does. And yeah, exactly. Those moments of being across the world going, what, what am I doing here? You know, what, what am I really doing here? Those deep questioning times is really what pulled me into my yoga journey and that, that more spiritual path of, of finding who you really are, which I believe we, we come out whole, we come out pure and we just pile so many beliefs and yeah, yeah. everything on top of it. And it's really about coming. You're home. a soccer player. You, you were born here. This is your nationality. This is the mm -hmm. type of clothes you wear. Here's your religion. Here's your cultural background. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not until you go through all the distractions, you got to go through them all and you got to really milk them out until you go, all right, I'm done distracting myself. Let, let's come back. To the truth come full circle and i'm sure you've had plenty of those moments as well on your journeys especially did you have those moments when you were road tripping across america or even even before that in your story what what were some of those moments for you in terms of going out into the world to try and solve something internally that was off correct and then going wait you know, what am I chasing here? Who am I? Like, what am I doing? Those that just that deep questioning. Sure. I would say the, the story that comes to my mind that was most consistent with that was actually in 2017, 2017. Uh, the, the long story short of it is at least the beginning portion was I was working four jobs, going to school full time, was in a relationship with somebody who was struggling and battling with bad depression, had some uh, familial things uh, that were kind of going on the background with like over relating to like crime related things and just all these things that were going on. I had a friend, a close friend who I was with five minutes later, like drove up the road, took his own life. 
mm-hmm. uh, gotten a bad car wreck, like all these things kind of compounded. And I was just working and schooling all the time, kind of, you know, doing what, what you're supposed to do. You go to school, you get good grades, you get a good job. And then you, know, you mm-hmm. work that job, get married, have, you know, two, three kids, get a dog, white picket fence, all that shit. Like, you know, kind of going through the, the run get through, the, get through real quick. Which is just <laughs> what we do. You know, we're, we're bred to be good little employees to do our role, get minimal minimal pay maybe if you really really work and you maybe get a little bit more but besides the point I got brought to my knees between that car wreck and losing a close friend Uh, I had quit all my jobs was went pretty much a little over a year without having a regular job I was living off the money that I made and just going to school uh, full-time online because I couldn't bear doing anything else I became morbidly yeah. depressed and would spend most of my waking days in my room by myself doors locked windows closed completely pitch black room playing video games uh, I look back now and I'm like that was obviously a clear tell sign that things were not uh, yeah. normal and I remember seeing the money in my bank account creepily moving towards zero and thinking I have to make money now and I don't know I don't know how to do that or I didn't I, I need mean, I don't know how but I was like resenting the idea of going and working for someone who didn't give it right. rats ass well, they don't teach me. us how to make money they really don't in schools they don't they teach you how to work for somebody but that's not making money that's just making somebody else money and you getting a little something for your slavery yeah the education is the education system is not designed for entrepreneurship and, and, and creativity it's designed for uh being able to filter in basically filter out those who don't work in the system and then pushing people right through into their their system they have in place and yeah. i felt that and again kind of skipping some steps i i went online went on this website called way up it's like a college student website and i like was like oh you know like it'd be cool to get like a little summer it was like in the summertime like a little summer camp job so i looked and i saw oh there's places out of state and uh Long story short, within three days, I applied to like 20 locations, uh, got interviewed <laughs> twice, background checked, booked a flight, canceled a flight to California because I've always wanted to go to California, mm-hmm. booked a flight, canceled a flight, ro- enrolled my best friend, and then we drove across the country and got to, got to California in 36 hours, just mm-hmm. driving straight there to get to camp. And uh, we ended up working that period. Um, we ended up working with kids and adults with special needs. Like at this really cool camp, it was this really amazing thing. We were mm. working with, you know, kids with anything from full blown cerebral palsy to, you know, minor learning disabilities, got to be around that, got to contribute, got to support. And I remember there came a point when in about a two week span, uh, it was kind of creeping towards the end of camp. I was like starting to feel like myself, like I'm starting to feel alive. I left my, my known world, kind of like the hero's journey. I had left mm-hmm. my known oh, yeah. world. I went on this adventure to to seek something else, and I remember I had gotten got got in a pretty bad accident where I like messed up my ankle. It was the same ankle I I jacked up in a previous accident uh, right before my wreck that had like rendered me incapable of walking for nine months. Uh, gotten the news that my grandfather had passed away, um, and then I remember distinctly being in a car with a couple of people we were driving to the beach we're on break during in the camp you'd have times when you would like for a week or like the weekend like you'd have off and you can go and do whatever you wanted to do so Mm -hmm. we we decided we wanted to go off to it was like la i think we went to santa monica beach but uh, i remember i love the beaches over there man they're so nice i love california beaches yeah one of my favorite places a little bit more once once we slow down yeah i'm getting i'm getting to the punchline. So I, I remember being in the car and I had my phone vibrating and like, look at my phone and I see the name, uh, well, I guess, because I don't know if I, I'm not going to say the person's name because I don't know if it's like appropriate, but I see this person's name is one of my, one of two of my oldest childhood friends. Uh, they were like the only real friends that I could say, like I'd know most of my life. I'd known them since I was five and I pick up the phone. And I was just like, Hey man, like what's up? Like this is yeah. completely out of the blue. And he was just like, Hey, you know, how you doing? He was just like, uh, he's like, I don't know if you heard the news, but uh, so-and-so uh, is no longer with us anymore. And this was the, one of the other two of our closest friends. And apparently he had taken his own life. Uh, it was suicide. And he's like, I just wanted you to know 
uh, it, they haven't really put it out anywhere, but there's a funeral going to be coming. And, you know, if you can make it, and I was just like, I, I wasn't gonna be able to make it. It was like right. within a couple of days I was in California. So unfortunately I, I wasn't able to make that. But I remember when I heard him say that I went completely flush. I completely numbed out. And when I hung up the phone and him, I'm with all these people. I didn't have a single emotion come up. Mm, interesting. Nothing. There was no tears. There was no anger. There was nothing. Hmm. And what do you think was that like a trigger that was hit or just a pattern of response that you had had? Because I know you're a, a very emo emotionally in tune guy. You're very in touch with your feminine feeling side as well. Or was that something that was developed later on? Believe it or not, so I'm a Pisces, and mm -hmm, I'm not like super down the rabbit hole of astronomy. But as I understand, like you know, Pisces are some of the higher emotional on the mm -hmm. on the spectrum. However, as a child, I remember being really emotional. But mm -hmm. I think I got the story at some point that uh, you know, emotions and emotional expression is actually not things that really guys boys do. So yeah, it's weak. I I intellectually understood emotions, but truthfully, and even now, this is my journey that I've really been going into is being able to feel and experience emotions. Almost all of them got repressed. Mm -hmm. So I was numbed out to to all of it. And yeah. I, I remember like going throughout the rest of the day, like nothing had happened. And it wasn't until like a couple of days later, uh, I, in like the same 48 hours, I heard that Chester Bennington, uh, for those of you who don't know, yeah. it's the lead, lead singer of Linkin Park, my childhood band, like one of my all-time favorites bands. I'm with took, you there. Yeah, he, he took his life. Like suicide, same thing. That was within the same like week of that conversation I had. And I was just like, what the, what the hell is going on? And like 24 hours later, I'm in a, we're, we're at camp. And I remember being in, we, we stayed in like these, uh, it reminds me of like Lincoln Logs, like his little cabins. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. You do Lincoln Logs as a kid, you put Lincoln Logs together. And I, I remember mean. getting a, a call from my stepmom, whom she rarely would like call me when I was up there. Normally I'd be the one kind of reaching out. But uh, I actually know I got a text. I got a text from one of my, uh, from one of my friends saying, hey, I'm so sorry about, uh, I'm so sorry about Hulk. And Hulk is, uh, was the family dog. He was like, real precious mm -hmm. he was like the most precious thing is like you know like a year old maybe and I was just like what do you mean and she was just like oh I'm so sorry I didn't know that you didn't know and I called my stepmom and, and she picks up the phone she's like hey what's up like all kind of like bubbly and giddy and I was just like what happened to Hulk and like immediately I hear tears I can just hear her tears I can feel her tears and I hear the words mm -hmm. come out of her mouth of you weren't supposed to find out and yeah. it and the just the context for that so i uh, found out that our our one year old dog had had a complication that ultimately he ended up passing away he's no longer with us and they decided that they want to tell me because they knew of all the things i had kind of going on in the background my friend passing and and all those things they just decided it wasn't the best to do that but i remember in that moment when she said that and like everything I had experienced in those past two weeks, I feel like really like my life to that point, I remember my entire body filling up. And then all of a sudden I started to cry. Like I hadn't cried like mm -hmm. in my entire life and just like- How good did it feel? Snot, bro, 10 or 15 minutes it went on for like this. And then when I finally pulled my head up and I like wipe away the last booger, even though the rest of it's down my shirt, I remembered feeling like I was reborn. Like- mm all the best that. feeling mm -hmm. it really is and it comes in the weirdest way is a good cry i'll really do it yeah that for me was when it really i don't think that awareness came in yet until <clears throat> later but it wasn't until that type of experience when i got back and i started and i got back to normal reality and i started sinking back in that was when i realized that i i was escaping it wasn't a form yep. of escapism yeah, we all do it in our different forms, absolutely. And um, obviously, we both, it's funny you said about your grandfather passing. I definitely want to circle back to that because on my hero's journey, leaving, you know, my soccer life and my known identity, moving into the unknown, my grandfather passing away was one of the first things that I had to go through. And for me personally, other than, you know, pets and 
you know, maybe distant aunts or uncles. That was my first encounter with death, and which I now can see as much more than just the end. But being with somebody, um, being somebody through that process, and especially for me, it being my grandfather, he was my idol, still is, still is my role model in life. There's never been a man better in my life. And yeah, I have a great father. Well, he's no, not perfect by any means who is, nor was I a perfect son. Um, but my grandfather definitely filled some of what I thought was a hole, you know, in that, in that aspect of being that male figure in my life, that, that like Godhead on this, on this plane. And when you lose somebody of that significance, um, it was hard, obviously, but it was the most beautiful thing I'd seen. And thank God I was going through my yoga teacher training and I had the tools to wow. deal with it well. And I was studying like the Tibetan Book of the Dead and, and those processes through the Bardos in which I got to actually apply to him when he was in those deeper states of just like lost consciousness floating through those states. Um, so I had the tools to deal with it a little bit better at the time. But I remember when I first found out, I was with one of my best friend's girlfriends, actually, and I was just sitting in the house and, you know, I got the call, like, you know, it, he's, he's, he's transcended, he's passed, however you want to word that. Uh, and I just broke down in front of this girl, you know, and we were, I was close with this girl, absolutely, but just absolutely broke down, weeping, like, in her arms. But then when those tears slow down and you take a deep breath, and like I said, thank God I had the tools or I, I, you know, I felt like I had the tools at the time. I'm still digesting that passing and learning many lessons from that. So it's not like, oh, it's all figured out by, by no means, but having the tools is huge. Um, and if you don't, which we don't have, especially in America, at least, we don't like to talk about death as a beautiful process, as, as an extension of life. We're like, oh, it's the end. It's so scary. It's so dismal. And I think it's important to give people those tools to deal with that before it comes, not like when it happens and then you get books on experiencing grief and all these like post postpartum or what's the right word for that? You know what I mean? After the experience is already gone, man, it would be beautiful to see more people accepting and willing to talk about that, that experience. And, I'm just curious with your grandfather's passing, who, who he was for you and maybe what that brought you. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. That is, uh, <laughs> that's not nearly as deep of a, of a hole as you might think. I actually wasn't extremely close with this grandfather and it wasn't for anything, any other reason, just because like he, most of my childhood, we didn't like see him a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But even, you know, energetically on an unspoken level there is that experience because you know you feel yourself you feel other people and you know mm -hmm. the the only real like lasting thing I knew about him because I, like I said I wasn't super close is that he was just a he was a good person yeah and, and he always did everything he could to like bring a smile to people's faces uh, I actually remember a distinct story this is so random this is so incredibly random but I remember my dad told a story one time yeah it's just it's incredibly random and this is where my brain goes to like this is the lasting memory I have of him but my dad said that he remembered a time he was walking behind him his name was Grandpa Walters so he was walking behind Grandpa Walters he's got his like old man walk kind of going on and he said that he remembered, he just remembered him passing this like massive stream of gas and with not a single thought, like no break in between the passing of the gas and, and this movement, he takes his hand and swipes off the fart as if he was cutting off like, no, <laughs> sir, you shall not follow me. That is not going to happen today. But can you just cut off a fart right in front of me? I can't. Yeah, was... unreal. Yeah, you know, and it's beautiful when, when you get to that stage of where you, you accept, okay, you know, I'm starting to pass. You can let go and you can be a child and have fun again. The number and of it fucks. Is, you know, I, I, what was that? The number of fucks given just starts to drop, it seems. Yeah, absolutely. And you and you get to see their spirit really come back out. And and it gets lost, you know, at first. They're like, you know, so much resistance. But then when they, when they accept what's going on, they just, they turn into this auspicious being. You know, I love to hear uh, Ram Dass. Auspicious. Is one of, yeah, Ramdas is one of my like favorite 
teachers, gurus, whatever you want to call him, but somebody that I truly look up to and take a lot of wisdom from. Um, but just hearing him and, you know, he's obviously very involved with dying and so many stories that we could go into about Ram Dass and those teachings to correlate. But please do take me down problem. his rabbit hole because I definitely haven't been down his down his much, but I heard he passed recently. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the exact timing and I was just kind of starting to flutter in with his teachings, you know, six months kind of prior to that passing. But as a lot of people have been saying, I do feel a much deeper connection to that source, that his spirit than, than I do with any of my other like teachers or people that I look up to, because I, I do believe with my entire heart and being that we can connect to spirits beyond this plane. There's, there's no yeah. doubt in my mind about that now. And that took a while to get to that point. And I still question a lot of things and the forms that the language comes through. And, but when you surrender to it, it's there. And he, he really is there in just such a, a bright, like playful spirit. You can't describe him. You really can't. He, he's just fun to listen to. He just pulls you up into these higher states of consciousness and gives you these great perspectives. And he does do a lot of work um, around death and people dying. And I don't know if it was him that said it or one of his teachers that said it. Um, I think it was, it might have been Babaji, but the, he just said, you know, what do I tell people about death and what do I tell them about dying? And he said, tell them it's completely safe. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> you know, just, just, just little drops worry about. Of, of truth like that. But it is true. You know, we're just dropping this body and moving on to new forms. And I believe and uh, some sort of reincarnation process in, in terms of energy and and the bardos and you know the tibetan module the book of the dead really has some deep explanations and thoughts and ideas around around that process which is obviously was channeled toward the psychedelic experience more so with with timothy leary and, and their work that they did and richard albert who you know pre pre ramdas um but yeah, that wisdom is there for us to to learn how to die peacefully mm. and not look at it as the end. And you know, that's really the point I'm trying to make. And and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful perspective to have. Mm. So I, there's a couple things in there. Two things that popped up. First, the Bardos. Is that the name of the book? No. So the name of the book is called the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I'm pretty sure that I think okay. that's the the title of it. And then. Timothy Leary and Richard Alpert used it for the psychedelic experiences to lead people through the guided experiences around the sixties when they could actually do these um, experiments on people with LSD and psilocybin and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but what the Bardos really describes is at the start, there's like the primary clear light is what they, they refer to it as like source, whatever that is for you, God or Gaia or, you know, maybe just yourself or whatever your belief system is. At the end of the day, there is something underlying all of this. And There's something. We'll something. We call it God. We'll we call just it refer Allah, to that as source. It Yeshua, yeah, exactly. Jesus. It's, yeah. It's all the same. Different names, same source. Exactly. So, and having that belief really helps helps you move along because otherwise you're really holding on to something. And then, you know, maybe when you don't see Jesus holding your hand on your deathbed and, and your visions when you pass, you're thinking where's he at you know what, what's going on but he's not sitting there by your bedside like oh man it's time for your <laughs> it's time for your life reflection this is where you really fucked up yep you should have definitely not have cut that guy off in the hot dog waiting line you're the worst <laughs> bad shame on you this is bad you bad you're, gonna have you. to, you're gonna have to relive this whole life because of that one moment everything else you were good <laughs> i was gonna give you i threw a couple yellow cards but that was the red card you're out you should like, have known you should have known you remember <laughs> you that one time in 97 <laughs> Uh, one job, but yeah, man. so they describe it as that that primarily primary clear light, which you can, with the right tools and the experience, surrender to and go completely into that void, that selfless state, the quantum, to use Joe's words, you know, whatever that is. But you can transcend all you know ego games and and really liberate yourself on that level, which is very hard to obtain and hold in a psychedelic experience as. I'm sure you can relate to, but then also on the greater scale in death is just surrendering to that source at being able to surrender to source at the end, um, which is very hard to do. And then they describe like the secondary, secondary primary clear light, which is like another opportunity to just surrender into source and 
transcend with peace. And then after that comes the first, second, and third bardos. Um, the first... What is a bardos? Bardos are these... Well, they... I am not an expert on this, first of all, for anybody that's listening to this going. Someone's like, oh, hold on, wait a second. <laughs> I got the book upstairs. I could run up and get it, but I, I don't want to waste our time. And it'll test my, my retention of knowledge. Um, but yeah, so it just takes you through these bardos, which are these like states of passing. And so like they'll describe okay. the first stage of passing. And they say within the other realms, these are like 30 years or you know, 30 days or some, some yeah. undual amount of time. Um, but we can experience them in smaller ways on this plane. Mm. And so the first stage is the period of like hallucinations where you'll, you'll just go through all your visions of your childhood visions and stuff mm. like that. And there's seven peaceful visions that you can really, you know, bliss out on. And there's the seven not so peaceful visions that we all have experienced in some form. And then there's the rebirth and the post like experience, post personality. Um, so it just shows you how you can transcend into source, um, either in the psychedelic experience or in death. You can transcend or you can hold on and get pulled through all these hallucinations, these painful memories and experiences and agonizing, just not being able to let go of your ego. Um, and so that can be really painful if you mm -hmm. don't have the tools to just surrender at first. Um, but then depending on how you go through this process, according to the text and, and this belief system is that you will choose how you're reborn depending on how you go through that experience. Um, and so you can either be mm. reborn on lower vibrations if you hold on and you're just wretched and you can re be reborn on a really low vibrational state. Maybe you're born onto this plane as like a poor man, drug, you know, druggy, or you can be reborn as a more like greater enlightened being. And that's really what that is to bring that first full circle um the ability to transcend either with peace or with pain mm. but at the core of it it's, it's all about choice and you know yep. there's i don't know why this popped in my head but i guess that i meant to go there if i remember this correctly somebody will tell me if i'm wrong they'll be like <laughs> oh yeah they'll, i'll get an email um you're full of shit and no and hashtag screw you yeah but you uh, guys are idiots have you ever have <laughs> i know you ever, have you heard the term le petit mort? I think it's French. And it's indicative of or is of expression of the little death. And it's commonly associated with uh, orgasm or more specifically ejaculation and how essentially we die a little death whenever we do that, whether it's, you know, because it's energetic and you're, you know, shooting your energy out and you like die a little bit every single time you do it. But part of me thinks that we've gotten so attached to this idea of this, this flesh body that we're in. Mm -hmm. Here's one thing that I know. What I know is that I don't know. I don't know if you heard <laughs> that song, Trevor Hall. It's like, I, I really don't claim much to know anything. I have ideas and it brings me back to this thing I heard from Neil deGrasse Tyson, that there's three types of truths, personal truth, political truths, and then universal truths. Mm -hmm. And we oftentimes get, we often confuse our personal truths with universal truths. And it's when we collapse those two, when there's a real dissonance, because ultimately what I know that I, what I, what I'd like to think that I know versus what I know aren't the same. For example, right. I'd like to think that I know that there is something that comes after this, that, you know, maybe there's reincarnation or maybe there Absolutely. is something that comes after that. But I, I heard Aubrey Marcus quote, I believe it was Paul Selig who said this. He said that um, something to the extent of, you know, none of us, none of, like, whether we're whether we die and we go somewhere else or whether we don't like no one really knows like no one's been there like you know to be able to come yeah. back and kind of like share it so it's like we don't know so you know there's no real like truth about it and for me no. in a way every single day we're experiencing yeah we're in a every dead night cycle when we go to bed every night wake you're up reborn you're reborn you go to sleep like and that's the thing in joe dispenza's work is that if we wake up the same day this every every single day the same person we've essentially and i'm reading the book called breaking the habit of being yourself we've we're yeah. living in habituated patterns and it's the mm -hmm. illusion that you know we're waking up the same person but they said it's like we shed every single cell like every three months like we're literally yeah people. constantly regenerating on all dimensions of being and yeah every single day you do have the opportunity to be reborn even just in meditations you have the opportunity to be reborn 
And like you said, it's just rewiring and that perception of who you are. If you walk around and you live this whole life thinking that you're this meat body and, and poor me and live in that victimhood mentality, which is really yeah. what that is at the end of the day, if you get stuck in it. And we see that so much and we, we see it, I say, not, I, not, I see it, we see it because we see it in ourselves first to see it in others. Yeah. Um, but we yes. do, we just get overly attached to the ego and what we think of as to be ourselves. And it's not until you have some sort of experience, whatever that is for you, losing somebody, having yourself a near death experience, just a good meditation, you know, tapping into your soul or your spirit or that energy beyond you and going, that's who we really are. That's who I really am. And if you can live from that place, it makes those moments, those little deaths that come along in a day, something that really rubs up against your ego and your belief systems and you have a chance to die. You know, our thoughts die so we don't have to is one of one of the great sayings. And I wish I could That's properly nice credit that, that to somebody, but it's a great saying and it's so true. Yeah. And it's everywhere. I mean, for example, even this conversation at some point is going to come to an end. It's, it's going to die and, you know, we'll yeah. kind of go on to the next thing or even a relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. That's, that's a common one, right? Like when a relationship's coming to its end, one or both parties are heavily impacted. And if you really mm -hmm. don't do the grieving process well, and I think that this is similar to uh, that resistance you pointed at with you're either going to resist and suffer, or you're going to really like accept and give into you're either going to accept that yes, it's coming to its end and yes, it hurts. And let me process, let me grieve, let me do what I need to do. Or you're going to keep fighting and trying to make and force. And that's where the true death is happening. Like that's, that's yeah. the awful. You can even visceral... do that when you're living too, just in your day-to-day -day life, just forcing things, just trying to be something you're not trying to force yourself into these little holes and you're dying as you're doing it. And it's causing so much fatigued in your body and you slowly become less in tune with your body and you don't you don't learn from the pain teacher you just feel pain and suppress it and then that's suffering you know obviously to a certain extent you can look at this from the higher perspectives that everything that we're experiencing is suffering because anything that's within this plane can be thought of as suffering because we're attached to it all if we weren't attached to it we wouldn't be experiencing it's our collective agreement that allows this to happen for sure but eventually you have to surrender to that hmm. that the whole death and dying process and everything to it it seems like that in and of itself can be a practice that we can bring with us everywhere is being able to acknowledge that you know what at some point all of this comes to its its end so to speak and instead of wasting time effort and energy on oh no it's coming it's let me be so present in this moment uh I, i've said this before and I, I sadly cannot remember who who like is directly attributed to but it said that if you want to know where you're supposed to be look at your feet like mm -hmm. this is this is ultimately all that there is and all that there's ever going to be and each second that's passed even those three seconds go like they're they're gone and you can reflect and get the wisdom from them and you can really get that or you can you know hold on to and latch on to and oh it could have been i could have done this i could have been a better lover i could have yeah but you didn't so get the fuck over mm -hmm. it like yeah this so is, move on this is what we have now like take those yeah. lessons and move on to the next thing and, and don't get too attached to you know the future as well like intend envision and bring it but live presently now as if you know this is your you know you're kind of coming to your last minutes because like ultimately we don't know and it's it's in that uncertainty yeah. in that in that realm of the, the quantum, really what Joe points at is when we go and become nobody and no place and no time, this is when we transcend this idea of who I am when I say I, or when you hear the word, the name Wolf or Jared or whoever, you know, however you're referring to it, it's being able to lose yourself <laughs> lose yourself in the music the moment like, hey, lose yourself you know in that lose yourself in that moment like you know mm -hmm. that's all we got yeah yeah it's, it's it takes skill to lose yourself it really does like it's a skill in action constantly not being attached to your beliefs and your ideas and trying to get other people to see things how you see them like come on come look at it over here like i'm telling you this is the way to look at it like no, mm -hmm. it's not. You don't have to get people to be on the same page as you. And I think we all, I still do it every single day, you know, waste energy trying to project and get other people to look at things the way that I do. And it's, yeah. why? 
why. That's not why we're here. We're not here to look at everything through the same lenses. I need you to look through those lenses clearly so we can learn from each other, you know? And sometimes it's hard because you do see people looking through some real fogged up lenses and you're like, oh, I've been there here. I have a towel to clean them off. And they're like, no, you get away, get away. So it, it, it's a dance, you know, of, of pulling your own, you know, internal lower vibrations and thoughts and beliefs to higher vibrations <clears throat> and the world around you, you know, bringing lower vibrations and to higher vibrations and not to look at it like I'm the higher vibration. Come on up here. Like you got to go down there and, and help them out and bring and bring them up within yourself and within the world around you. Yeah, and that's also something to be about like meeting a person where they're at. That's one thing mm -hmm. I, I know about myself is naturally I lean towards the uh, like advice giving type. Like I was like, I want to mm -hmm. help people like, oh, you have a problem. Yeah. Like, let me do this. But ultimately, if a person's hand is closed, it, their hand is closed. Over. You can't force you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And at the end of the day, like no one likes being force fed. No, nobody does. Nobody does. And that's that's a big lesson for me is. I, I have ideas and I'll share my, my personal truths. I'm really glad I got that distinction for myself as my own personal truths. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, like my number one commitment for myself and for every single person I come into touch with is love. If it's yep. not, if it's not loving, then no matter what I say, it's not going to be received. I mm -hmm. just, I made this mistake just recently where uh, someone had shared uh, how they were having some like, kind of like, butting headness with a person that they're in a relationship with and they you know haven't done the best at being able to take time for themselves and setting boundaries and and uh immediately i just kind of went into this whole like my own spiel about my own personal truth about like yeah well like when you're not honoring yourself you're also mm -hmm. not honoring them and you're not giving them the opportunity to honor you back and that energetically like it messes up and thwarts what you have now what's present is shame and guilt not love because you can't have two things exist in the same place what's mm -hmm. present is shame and guilt and the only like that that doesn't work and and i sent that and then i woke up the next day and i and i looked at it and i was just like i want you to know i'm really sorry yeah and i just apologized like you didn't ask for that like i had no yep. permission and no, even if what i caught. yeah so easy it's so easy because at the end of the day it's all love from where you're coming from and trying to help them but like you say, sometimes you can mix your own ideas of love and your personal truth and oneness with, and it just becomes a projection, you know, and that's a hard balance. And I, and it's a, it's a lesson that I'm grateful to be learning every day is finding that balance because we all are one in my belief. And, you know, I'm this table next to me. I'm you, you're me, just in a different time, space, reality. We're all experiencing this and you can experience it from that level of oneness but we have our egos to differentiate and to have our own beliefs and our own unique natures and to learn from them. Yeah. Sometimes we get caught in trying to what we think is the do is the right thing, but then you find out it's, it's not. <laughs> um, mm. And that's humbling, you know, it's humbling, but that's how you learn. If you're not willing to learn, then you'll never grow. And, you know, we know a lot of those people that aren't willing to learn and grow from their mistakes and, learn how to speak and communicate clearly. And I think, you know, that's what this comes down to is clear communication. Mm -hmm. It seems like the further I go into my journey and say like, like I'm this old wise sage, I, it's <laughs> actually funny speaking of real quick side notes to someone who was talking to me, we were like making funny references about like, so I was like, you're an old soul. It's just like, you know, if I could, if I could be a mixture of anything, it'd be like Yoda and Alan Watts. Like that would yeah. just be like transcending goals. If I could just be like Yoda and Alan Watts at the end of my life, just like, sitting up just sharing and like sharing like all these deep insightful things and like ah yes this yeah. is the way and then right at the end being like and also i could be completely totally full of shit like go and do what yeah. works best for you like that's what it comes down to like that's i can the say best perspective that is yeah. the best perspective and i personally and i'm sure you have this attachment within you somewhere is you want to be that that being at the end that is yeah. graceful and wise yeah and, and, but until you let that go you won't become that person you know that's true and, and i found myself like in this i went i'm doing it in this journey. conversation yeah like yeah, oh what's a good quote to put in right now i got nothing and like that's the yeah. very thing that has me not have it come to me it's, it's frustrating it's frustrating and there's my resistance but like that's the thing that gets in the way of it being this authentic expression even now i'm like yeah. oh there, there's my being now i'm being honest i'm sorry i yeah. cut you off but like that's the truth no it's the truth and those are the things that that we need to keep mining for we need to share ideas and thoughts either whether you diary or, or you have podcasts or you just talk to your friends, you need 
to get it out of your damn head because if you don't that echo chamber gets so crazy and yeah your mind is a dangerous place it really is it really is it definitely but can i think be. for me the simplest truths are what helped me train my mind like the book as a man thinketh that's a book that i read like every few days because it's like 60 pages of just pure wisdom and it's this big it, it fits in your pocket i have it and yeah it's just the deepest wisdom and the most simple truths that you could get and that's what i feel myself definitely my roommate's about to walk into the house just so you know but she'll be going straight up welcome and and we pivot and we work with what we got the wave comes the wave goes and we keep yeah you just got to keep going with it women like dory <laughs> um forgot where I was going with that point but just the simple truths is are the most profound truths and the ones that can really bring you back home you know the the second coming I, it, I, there's a term for it in psychology that I know is used a lot but like the second simplification or something like we've got to go in we've got to overcomplicate it overthink it to make yeah. it simple again you know and make it digestible and, is that and a thing work. yeah yeah that's definitely uh, um I don't know if it was Jung or Nietzsche or somebody that mm. talks about it a lot. Probably um, Jung. That's some shit Jung would say. Yeah, it's that second simplicity, you know, or maybe it's the first simplicity. I'm not sure, but you've got to simplify it again. But you have to go and dive into these things. You've got to, if you have like a teacher that you really feel connected to, go all the way in, read their books, uh. go all the way in, and then come back. And and we can do that. We can step into through books and podcasts we can like, yeah we can just step into and we can be joe dispenza for a while and think like joe does and from Ooh. that perspective and then come back to you know yourself and you're just constantly adding layers to who you are and that's how i feel about it that is really beautiful i've never heard it put like that but it's like you know if we're imagining like this this intergalactic fabric that is us and we're all these different weaves and bides. Like I can look at a blanket and see like all these, like, you know, these things, like these things that be weaved yeah. together and, and everything. But ultimately there's all these tiny little intricacies that are ultimately like weaving us up. And sometimes we get holes in it because things break mm -hmm. off. But like, I didn't ever thought about like getting lost in someone else's world. Like when I'm reading that book, it's like in that time frame, I am now in the mind of, in the world of, in the mm -hmm. sphere of his work and to go down that rabbit hole. Like that's one thing, about myself that I struggled with for the longest time was uh, going deep into things, like really committing to something. And this is like one of yeah. the first times I'm like, <clears throat> like way down the rabbit hole, but you're right. Like there's the beauty yeah. in getting so lost into it. When you come up and breathe, you're just like. Reborn. <laughs> yeah. You got a whole new crazy. perspective. You're just rewiring neural pathways, you know, like it is like a mini neural Genesis. Like you can really lose yourself in a positive way, you know, Obviously, you can lose yourself in a negative way. And if you get too far down the rabbit hole and just try to be Dr. Do Dispenza or Paul Check for, for the rest of your life, it's not work. You know, that's not how it works. You've got to bring it back to your nature and kind of like weave it into your scarves to, to use your analogy and, and, you know, and then move forward with and keep sharing those teachings. And you see that over and over because you hear somebody say something or even if it's the most deep pure truth and you go that's right you don't go i've never thought you know what i mean it's it's a different feeling mm. when you resonate with a truth like oh yeah like that's right like and that's how i feel with a lot of the teachings that i'm pulled to and i'm sure you're pulled to and those are like that's when i know that's just another form of like my intuition i guess so to speak another a feeling that i can go yeah, this is resonating. Like the, this is for, for me to tap into for sure. It's mm. never something like, uh, uh, what, like, what is this? Like it's, aha. Uh -huh. And mm. I try to find more of those ahas. Uh <laughs> yeah. It, it's like the simple, and that's the thing we were talking about this a lot. Like this is like the running theme for this episode for me, at least is it, it's the beauty and the simplicity. It's like, you can, you know, read this massive book and then be left with like this one, you know, coherent idea. It's like, oh yeah, like really yeah. at at the, the the core of, and I'm making this up because I actually don't know what the core of As a Man Thinketh is, but I'll just use the book, The One Thing. I read the book called The One Thing. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal book, but in essence, actually, this is perfect. The entire premise of the book is about how 
when we have all this, you know, things on our plate at the end of the day, it's about figuring out what is it, if I have a 10 year goal, what is one thing I can do in the next five years? What is one thing that I can do in the next one year and the mm-hmm. next, in the next, uh, next quarter, the next six months and the next three months and the next month into the next mm-hmm. week into the next day in the next hour to the next minute to right now. Like you, you break it down yeah. and what you get to is this one simple truth is that this is, this is it. Mm-hmm. And, and you're left with this, this pithy little statement. You're like, Oh, wow. And then you start to, to connect that to, you know, things that you learn in Joe Dispenza or in Ram yeah, Dass or in all I these things. That. I but love that. The running thing though, is running into me. It's like, I don't, more than ever, I'm not attaching myself to the things that kind of pop up in my head and the ideas that I, that I generate. Cause I don't think it's any of it's mine. That's no, why no. I try to be unattached. Yeah. They're just thoughts and they're flying around and you go pull that one down. And if it's a really good one, you want to hold on to it. You don't want to let it go. You know what I mean? Somebody else might just get it, take it away from you, but they're just thoughts, you know, and to come back to that thing that I said earlier, our thoughts die. So we don't have to, you know, all those beliefs, they die. So we don't have to, but if you don't let those thoughts and beliefs die, you might, you might just lose this meat sack. (laughs) So it's, it's definitely a game of, of losing yourself and staying rooted in who you really are. And to use like Paul Cech's language, you know, the lowercase self first, like the capital S self, and then like the all capital self, there's different stages where you want to like ego soul or God, like there's different dimensions to our being that we can experience from. Hmm. I had heard of the lowercase S self and then the higher case i didn't know that there was an all caps but that was yeah that would just be source you know what i mean but that's just the highest state of consciousness i mean everything we're experiencing is just between two poles hot cold hate love like where's the middle you know or does it just gradually become warmer or colder like there is no middle point there is no hell hell or heaven you know what i mean like we're just here we're in it we're experiencing it and the frequency the vibrations that you are tuned into and emitting is what you're going to experience and like jordan Mm. peterson always says you you can experience heaven or hell right here in this exact moment but it's up to you you know it really is up to you and for me the reoccurring theme and all in, in in my heart for my deepest truths is that it we're just experiencing as a greater whole we're in like the mind of the source like we're in some sort of greater dream but then we're also all collectively experiencing through our own perceptions a creation of our minds and so that's like the deepest truth that i keep getting pulled back to um and whether you want to use the term mind or soul or you know core of your being we create our reality and our, our reality also shapes us. It's, it, there's like a, a dual, um, a flow that's going on all the time between our thoughts and what we experience. And that's why like, as a man thinketh is so potent to me. The Kabbalion is so potent to me. The Four Agreements, another great book. Um, but yeah, that is definitely the theme of our conversation today, isn't it? Just the simple truths. Yeah, at the core of it, it's, how can we live more effectively through simplifying and yeah and i think we all are because of this covid we're all in a space to look at that to slow down we can't be you know the businessman you 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 can't go to your favorite restaurants you you lose so many things that you identify with yourself and now you're just left with your being and your thoughts and yourself and or your closest loved ones to and it's like, are you going to sit there and judge them and be negative in this time? Or are you going to use this as like a rebirth process to like come back home? Because Mother Nature's obviously doing it. She's like, I need a fucking break. These people are crazy. You know? And they going so crazy, messing up my beaches. The hell's wrong yeah. with these people? Putting and you see water. her being reborn. And I don't know about you, but I see so many more people walking the trails and being pulled into nature too. And we're gaining a deeper respect for the simple things and the simple truths, like being able to go out and walk, you know, or being able to go to school or just to go to work. Like we've lost all of that together. It doesn't matter if you're rich, you're poor, you're black, you're white, 
you know, we're oneness is like really the deepest teaching I feel like we can gain from this, this pandemic. Hmm. I've had a similar thought and it connects to well to a concept in the book I read called the Celestine prophecy. Hmm. And Who's that by? I've never heard of that. James Redfield. I think it was James Redfield. It was actually hmm. one of the first books I ever read. It's, it's brilliant. It's an absolutely brilliant book. It's a, uh, it's a fictional book written about not fictional stuff. And it details a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It details a story and it basically takes you on this adventure of this, you know, regular average day guy who like all of a sudden his world is kind of like he, 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 hero's journey. He gets a call from this friend. He hasn't, you know, interact with a long time. She's like, Hey, there's this, there's this you know, manuscript that's out and it has all the answers to the, to the universe or something like that. And, and people are out to get in. They're trying to like find me. And she meets, he meets up with this woman and like, she like disappears. So he's like, I have to go to like, I can't remember, it was like Africa or something. But he's like, I have to go and find like this, this, these truths. And like, she gave him like the first one. And, uh, and now I'm like forgetting, I have to re- 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 read like the, the main points. But the point is, is that one of the truths was that uh, is like, the think of the second one, it points at uh, history and how, right now what's happening is that there's a massive collective restlessness and the restlessness is due to the fact that for so long in our history we have preoccupied ourselves we're working and we're not working we're working out we're we're constantly in the state of going and going and going but now people are starting to get restless and they're starting to ask questions and now it this take, take, takes this person through this entire journey but ultimately it was about a return to this higher energy state because now now we're, a lot of us are forced into it. Like we, if we, from everything we've associated with in our known world from jobs to friends and everything else, now it's like, you have to be with yourself. And just like you pointed out, naturally we start leading into, I want to be in nature. I, my biggest miss is like being able to freaking hug people and like cuddle and oh, yeah. just human interaction for God's mm-hmm. sake. I ask this question to people as I think it's so important. It's like, what would you do if you had 72 hours left to live? And I guarantee you it's not a single person who says, Oh, I'm going to go work my nine to five. <sighs> Yeah, you'd have to be really either passionate or ignorant. <laughs> Depends what the work is. <laughs> Depends yeah. what the work is. But yeah, you know, people are so caught up in the rat race. And I think we all individually, collectively need to take time to ask those deeper questions. Who are we? What is this? And why are we here? And how can we make this all better together? And for me, you know, we're all here to evolve mine to harmonize my like purpose that I've like you know written out on my wall upstairs is my purpose is to evolve to harmonize mind body and soul and help others to do the same and like for me that's my most simple like purpose here on this plane is to evolve myself as as a as a being and an energetic spiritual being whatever you want to call it and then help all my friends family enemies they're all my friends at the end of the day do the same Mm. so and finding the ways to do that can be very tough as we've talked about you know sometimes it's hard to clearly communicate those truths and our egos and ourselves we just get in the way of what we're really here to do and not to like go back into our stories but to bring my little story full circle is I had to leave that identity of the soccer kid to go take this deeper path but then I was the yogi, you know, I just put on a different suit, as Ram Dass likes to say, like, you just put on different suits, and they're still going to be uncomfortable. And it's not until you go back to your nature and like who you really are as to where you're going to feel comfortable. And so although I did go through this yoga teacher training, and it brought me to a very, to here, to, which is where exactly where I needed to be. And it brought me through the teachings and the experiences in those eight or nine months that I really needed but then I kind of, I got caught again, you know what I mean? Then I was trying to be the yogi, you know, I was trying to come off to other people as, as, as the yoga guy, you know, light and a little lighter and higher vibrational, you know what I mean? But then that's like, Ugh, what am I trying to do here? And now I find myself coming Fuck, back to my nature, to my simple truth, which is I love my family. I love to play soccer. I love my friends, you know, I'm a playful, energetic being at, at, at my nature at the most. And, and to see that I, I suppressed and repressed and repressed that so much because I had this idea that I had to leave it behind to go and be something else. But now to just come full circle 
with this downtime that I've had and see, yeah, you know, I still want to play soccer. I want to use all the teachings and the lessons and the potential that I have gained through my like, you know, spiritual journey and bring it back to my nature and, and play the game that I love and do the things that I love and not try to be somebody to look a certain way for my Instagram, which I deleted, you know, four or five months ago now. And I don't think I'll ever download it again. I feel for me personally, it was just a toxic platform, of, but you know, I still use Facebook and things like that, but yeah, just coming, coming back to your nature is the best feeling it really is like, and you can do it in your day, you get pulled away into food or, or women or projections. And then, and then you'll catch yourself. You'll be like, Whoa, whoa. <laughs> like I am really in my head here. Like slow down, take a few grounding breaths, you know, whatever it is for you to recenter yourself. But we go through that on, on huge scales throughout our life as well. Mm. That one's so the whole social media and coming back to yourself and everything is such a tough one for me because I've already decided that if I could live in a world and never have to touch social media ever again, mm -hmm. that's what I would do. And at the same time, I have this like inkling that, you know, at least in my current state, and I've said this ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to like speak and share a message and I didn't necessarily know what about, but I knew yeah. I wanted to provide a platform for people. Hence, you know, why this podcast mm -hmm. exists and why I want to create a community yeah. for in a space for people to, to feel comfortable to do that, to, Absolutely. to Absolutely. look at Chris right in his face and, and to observe him and to see him be like, Oh wow. Like in watching you just be yourself, I got to, I got to see a part of myself that I didn't realize was there. I got to yeah. see outside of myself into that. And it's always this like weird trivial thing because it's like, I, I've said this to people a lot is that, you know, it's tough, you know, me being associated as like the, I'm the upbeat motivational guy who's like always supposed to be on my shit. And at the same yeah, time, right, like, right. Now more than ever, if you ever look at my social media, like you'll see me posting things like, yeah, like I woke up feeling depressed today. Like I oh, it's up feeling truth. sad. It's or... deep truth. Absolutely. And that's the thing. That's the polarity of it. It's only toxic if you're toxic and your thoughts and, and your motivations and your why is toxic. And for me, I had to, do, and that's how, that's how I, I, I work. I see this pattern and I'm trying to chill it out a bit, but I like pull myself out of everything, you know, and I'm like, oh, got to step back. You know, this isn't right. Let's start it all over. But you know, that's starting to become less dramatic, you know, and, and obviously social media is a beautiful platform and a beautiful way because on one hand it, it, it connects us all on a deeper level and we can share information and intelligence like that and we can really help this process of evolution. But as long as your why is clear and for you it's clear, you know, you, you're clear that you're here for your reasons, however you, you word that personally, but you're clear, you know, and when you're clear, you can communicate and be in truth much yeah. easier than if you're trying to be somebody that you're not yet. Not that you aren't, but just not yet. It's that process of the unraveling. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a fun process, isn't it? And it'll, it'll never stop. It'll never stop going. <laughs> mm. That's what makes it so much fun. That's why we're here. That's why we came here, right? We came here to forget to remember. You know? We came here to forget to remember. Yeah. To come back home, to find our truth, to find our light and share that shit with the world. Isn't that what it's all about? That's really all it's about at the end of the day. The sim most simple truth. Uh, my friend bringing this all full circle. Hmm. Representing our intentions. How do you feel like you did? Spoke my truth, gained some mm -hmm. wisdom, and I feel love. That's it. That's all. That's all I could do. Did my best. And you? Hell yeah! I forgot my first word. I know my second one was fun, and that was like vulnerable the most was important. your first word. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, the vulnerability started to kick in the second half because that was the big thing for me. It was it's so silly. Like I'm like, oh, I gotta have these great quotes and everything. Because the truth of the matter is, vulnerable thing. I look at people like Aubrey Marcus and. And, and Joe Rogan, all the people I'm like, oh man, they're so good. They're man. so just, good. They've got all their quotes on point. They yeah. know exactly who said it. Oh, and Paul Everything. Check, I don't know if you, you follow Paul Check, but Paul Check is a deep teacher in my heart as well for me. And God, he knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he doesn't even have to think. He's pulling up quotes from like 19, like 1800s, just off all podcasts. You know what I mean? Legendary. It's like, 
fuck, you know, but you, you can't do that unless you get out of your way. And you, and I felt it in this conversation for sure points where it was like, okay, am I trying to convey my story here or the truth and trying to like come back from the story mm-hmm. I was trying to tell to bring it to the truth of what the story brought me, because you can either get caught up in your past and your past story, as we know, and live, bring it into the present moment and just hold on to it. Or you can just look back and be like, cool. Yeah. Okay. Learn from that. Good. And looking for And here we go. Yeah. Wow. If I got nothing else, this very last minute was uh, definitely plenty vulnerable. And it's, it's the truth. Like that's mm-hmm. one of my biggest, one of my biggest things ever is being wanting to be liked, loved, accepted and, and seen yeah. as somebody who's knowledgeable. But if I were to let all that go into, it's like when I let all that shit go and it just show up as me, I'm still worthy of love exactly as I am. Yeah. And it's hard, you know, that's been a recently, um, you know, repressing all, a lot of old energies and thoughts and beliefs and stuff. I actually, I've actually been working with some like third chakra digestive issues. Um, and just kind of like digesting these truths is like what it feels like. <laughs> it's like, Oh God. Like, and then, and you know, I have, you know, my, I've had some real digestive problems and I've you know put myself on a little elimination diet and stuff to work with it. But it's funny how it, it, it does manifest in your life. If you continue to repress your truth. Hmm pain teacher comes a knocking and if you don't know how to sit and learn and look into your pain without a doctor and without other people's help and googling your symptoms you'll never grow Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day no matter what we say i always want people to hear and they're listening is that distinguishing between personal truth and truth we can share everything in the world but at Mm -hmm. the end of the day if the shirt doesn't fit the shirt doesn't fit put that shit down Mm -hmm. it'll take a single thing I say yeah. as, as the truth, unless it, unless it really works. Right. Yeah. If it really resonates with you, fine. But just know that we're here with you. Whoever's listening to this, we are in the I same. I'm so full of shit sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's hard to, to explain to people sometimes. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to help you or tell you these things because I'm above you. It's because I'm right there fucking up every single day. Per over day. And over, every day you know, and sometimes you watch yourself and you're like, what is this guy doing? You know, you wake <laughs> up, you meditate, you get centered, you go through like your chakra thing. Oh um, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling yeah. good. Who put that dirty dish there? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and you the- <laughs> As you like, look at my, like, oh, I'm so zen out right now. Look at a text. You forgot to do this thing. Son of a bitch. It's yeah, like everything I, I just did. for unemployment right now. I'm oh, my, my. like, that's the human in me. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. We're all humans just doing our absolute best. Stop being so hard on yourself and the people around you. Mm. Now that is a universal truth. Yeah, right. If we can let go of whacking ourselves over the head straight whack-a-mole style and doing that to others. Yeah, using discipline as a stick to beat yourself with. Never works. Chris, bringing this all together, if you were to consolidate this into one thing that you could leave, you can picture however you want, whether it's like you could tell your past self one thing, or if you could just leave someone with one thing to act, take action on. And I'll say this, even if I sound like a broken record every single time, I don't want this to just be another good idea, another conversation. We're like, okay, cool. I listened to this. All right, boom, on to the next thing. You know, really the most important part of, of any journey is integration. What is one thing that one can take and integrate and take as a applicable thing and say, okay, this is how I'm going to improve upon and begin, you know, maybe it's following my truth or speaking up. Maybe it's having that difficult conversation with a, with a family member. How do I live in this truth? I lost you on video. It's and coming back. Back. <laughs> back. Get it. Look, back, yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what's your deepest truth? I'm like, boom, peace. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. That is the truth. Nothing. In everything, um, there is nothing. And in the nothing, there is more nothing into the ever sense of nothing of nothing. And deep. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, you know, I've, I've blabbed out a lot in this conversation for sure. A lot of what I am trying to convey is truths. And rather to just use truth as like an easy out because we know that's the deeper message here. Be forgiving and grateful forgive yourself no matter what the mistake is no matter what you said 
or what somebody else said or what's going on, forgiveness and gratitude. If you can't forgive and not forget, but just forgive and be grateful for either the experience that you're in or that we're all in, you know, just be forgiving and grateful. And you can take that in just a sip of water, just slow down, enjoy that sip, enjoy that bite of food. Like you've got the time, be grateful. That's what I would leave people with. And what about you, brother? I thought that shit my heart, man. And it's again, the simple truths. I hear it enough mm. times and I'm like, yeah, if I got one thing I'm grateful for, if I can forgive myself for one thing, it's during this podcast is not allowing myself to not have it all figured out. Yeah. And if there's one thing I'm grateful for is that I have this podcast with you to have gotten that and figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> Just figure out that you've not got it figured out, right? <laughs> and, and that's okay. And, and, and we keep walking. Yeah, it's okay. <clears throat> one thing to take away. <clears throat> Don't wait. And this is at the core of the message. Don't don't wait to pick you. Because hmm. it's real easy to get lost, distracted, and overwhelmed with all of the, fuck, man, I've got like 30 ads. I'll swipe for even two seconds on Instagram. All these things I should, I should buy. Buy this now. You need this. Just pick you. Hmm. If it doesn't resonate, if it doesn't vibrate the right way, always always pick you because at the end of the day all you have is yourself and for someone who for so long hated hated themselves truly hated myself Mm. if there's anything i wish i could have done actually i won't do that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dwell on it but if there's one thing i know that i can do going forward is i can choose me Mm. everybody else taken (laughs) chris Uh, if people want to get connected with you stay stay in touch what's what's a good way for that to happen well no instagram people (laughs) <laughs> no Instagram, no Twitters, no Snapchats. I do have a Facebook, um, Chris Wilkinson. Um, you know, when this podcast come out, we'll obviously link, link each other in. But yeah, that's that's the way to stay connected with me. And if you listen to this and something resonated or you want to ask a question or tell me I said something wrong about the Tibetan tell Book me. of the Dead, you reach out and you tell me you, or you ask a question, you feel free. I am humble and willing to learn from my first podcast experience. <laughs> yes, this is your first one. I'm so popped your cherry. You're welcome. Yeah, man. I'm so grateful that you had me on. Um, you know, we really have connected in a way that I haven't with other people. We met for one night, bro. And we just had like one day together and it just fit right in. You know what I mean? It really just resonated. And, you know, I know Morgan isn't as prominent in your life anymore, but she was, you know, definitely another person that I connected with, Kayla, Taylor, all those people. Um, and I just hope to find more connections like that, bro. And I can't wait to see you soon. You're in Orlando. I'm in Tampa. I'm in the St. Pete. You are. Heck oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the place thing. to be. It really is the place to be. It's good to happen. But we will get together soon and run a podcast again later. Maybe I'll start my own podcast. Who knows? It's a good time to do it. Yes. My friend, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, brother. I love you. Thank you for having me on. And to everyone who's listening, from the bottom of my heart, soul, my toes, my earlobes, all the things, Mm -hmm. just thank you for any single second that you took to listen to this. And if you get nothing else, please continue to live your truth, find your truth, and follow the wolf within you. Much love. Much love. You want to give him a big out? We're going to give him a little bit of that and that how loving. How? Ow! Feed the right wolf, my friends. Feed the right wolf. Peace.